Hey guys, good morning. If you're new here, my name is Kira. Feel free to call me Q and welcome to my garden. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. And today is all about just getting some projects done. The big project that I really am trying to get to today is planting our tomatillos. And the reason that's a big project is because I have to clear the area where they're gonna go first. And then we're gonna plant them and kind of like manage the area so we can keep the grass down. I'll show you what it looks like. And then we have a couple other things that I wanted to get done first. So I am right now just stacking all of these pots by color. Yesterday I washed all of these with soapy water, rinsed them off, and then left them here to dry so that they are ready to go for the next time I'm ready to use them. I'm trying to get in the habit of doing this <laughs> and not waiting and just kind of like leaving them dirty because that's typically what I've done in the past and then I always regret it. I always hate that, you know, before I get to start seeds, I have to wash all this stuff that's dirty from the last season. So I finally got my act together and did this. I want to say it was fall going into spring. I had everything washed and ready to go in the springtime. And I'm just so glad that I took the time to do that. So these are all good to go. I just try and disinfect them a little bit. I just use like regular soap, nothing fancy. Some people will like dip them in like an alcohol solution that's like really diluted. I don't go through all of that. I figure for me and my own personal uses, soap and water is fine and better than nothing. So that's what I do. But yeah, so once I get all these stacked up, they'll be ready to go into the house with my indoor seed starting setup. And the other thing I wanna to do today, you can't see both of them, but there's a green stock over there. <laughs> and the other one is right to my right on this side. And it's time to fertilize those guys. And so we'll be doing that together and I'll show you what I do for fertilizing plants. It's really easy. So yeah, I'm glad you're here to hang out with me as we get some projects done together. I got these colorful pots that you see here from bootstrap farmer and I absolutely love them. One, because I just love colorful things and two, because I really like to color code when I seed start and this is an easy way for me to use less labels when I am starting my seeds inside. I basically just use like one color for each variety, switch it up and it's a really good way for me to visually see what's what without using so many tags inside. I also really love that these are just like really strong plastic and so they last a long time. Now, the six cell trays that you see here, I actually just got at the end of last year, but the bigger pots that are the two inch pots I've had for a couple years now, and then the black 10, 20 trays I've had for I want to say about four, four years now, probably. And they've lasted beautifully. I just got more of the black trays because I got more seed starting stuff. And I'm so happy with having all of this. It is an investment. So if you want to spend the money, go for it. I definitely have really enjoyed having them, but I didn't start with this, you know, especially when I was figuring out if gardening was something that I wanted to stick to. I had just the basic stuff that you can get from any big box store and it did break on me in the first season and honestly I just kept using it broken. Um, the trays weren't as strong as these but I just kind of dealt with it and it was fine. I still grew plants in it. I still learned a lot in the gardening process with them. So if this is something that you want I'll leave a link to what I have below but this is just an extra thing if you are getting started and you know that you want to invest in something that's high quality. When it comes to fertilizing our plants, we like to use the organic fertilizers as much as we can. Here, I have one that we just picked up at our local nursery. It's fish emulsion and kelp. It's a 411. And so those numbers mean, it's usually N, P, and K, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So it's a, a pretty easy going fertilizer that you can use for your plants. And this one in particular says to use uh, two tablespoons for every one gallon of water. This is a two gallon watering can that I have here. And so I'm gonna be using four tablespoons in here. 
Now, I like to do this with disposable gloves because I've done it before with my gardening gloves and then I always spill it and then it's just in my gloves forever until I'm able to wash them. And I don't like washing my gardening gloves, especially if I get this stuff on it with like our regular clothes and stuff like that. So the, the smell just ends up in my gloves for a very long time and I don't like it. So uh, disposable as it is. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna pour some water in here first. Not a lot, just enough to kind of coat the bottom. I like using this watering can because we broke it, <laughs> it's cracked, but that's actually really beneficial in this case because the opening at the top is really big. I mean, it was, it's already, the original opening was bigger than the other watering can that we have. And I just like that better so that there's less spillage with this. Now for this stuff, shake it a little bit. I always make sure the top is on before I shake it because it's not the best smell, but it is very good for your plants. So now that I have a little bit of water in here, I just pour the four tablespoons in and then tap this bad boy. When I was pregnant last year, I could not do this job. Oh no, there's a hole in the bottom. There might be a hole in the bottom of this. Uh, there's a hole in the bottom of this one. Okay, we might have to use the other one. Let me use it this one time for this really fast and then I'll finish talking. One thing I'm really working on this year is regularly fertilizing these two green stalks. So far I've been really good about it. I am doing this about every two weeks or so and the plants are doing really well. Um, they're big, they're green, they're beautiful. This is the first year that I've really seriously garden in these green stalks. I got them last year. I put stuff in them, but I didn't really have the time to take care of them well. And this year I'm trying to be a lot better about it. And so this fertilizer schedule is really easy. You can see I just mix up the stuff and pour it in the top of the green stalk. I'll also have a link to my green stalks down below. This is the original size and uh, they're really great. I think that they're really awesome for people who have you know, smaller gardening spaces. Honestly, I wish that I had known about these back when we just had a patio because they would have been really awesome. All right, that's one green stock watered. Let me, I guess, get rid of this thing. That's so sad. This one's a little harder to aim into. So instead of using the shower setting that I use for most everything, I'm gonna go to the jet setting. Yeah, see? And then this green stalk doesn't have all of the towers on it. And so I think what I'm gonna do is do three tablespoons for this one. And the opening for this one is basically the same size as my tablespoon. <laughs> and I have shaky hands, so it never works super well. Is the water coming out of this one too? No, that can't be right. Maybe I'm just over spraying. Now this green stock is a little shorter. It does have another tier onto it, but we're missing one of the little like watering discs that goes in it. And so that's why this one's just shorter right now. We need to order a new one, but it's actually working out really well. I do think that I'm gonna move this green stock over to the other side of my patio, just because the plants here are doing really well. They're really green and beautiful because I think they're getting enough sun for that and this fertilizer schedule is working really well for them, but they're not quite blooming the way that the other green stock is. And so I think they're not getting quite enough sun for that. Now here I'm just cleaning off the patio because I spilled some of that fertilizer and I just wanna wash it off. Normally I don't worry too much about stuff like this, but the smell of this really lingers. <laughs> and also my dog will try to eat all of it and make himself sick. If you've never had a pit bull, apparently they have very sensitive stomachs. I did not know that until I was a pit bull owner. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just cleaning up here a little bit just so that we don't have this smell lingering and we're also just not tracking it back in the house. All right, so that's the stinkiest project out of the way. Now, on to the big projects. So I wanna say about a week ago, we bought a bunch of starts from the nursery and three of them were tomatillos. And we don't really have a place to put them right now, except for 
right here. <laughs> so this has been an area where we clearly, you can see, have just been piling stuff until we can get to it. So there's a bunch of branches and stuff here that we were working on putting into smaller pieces to hopefully uh, put into our compost and stuff like that. Just as we've been trimming things, especially in the wintertime, we just piled it here so it was out of the way. But now, not only is it ugly, it is officially in the way and we need this space. So I just came out here and you can see the measuring tape down here. I was curious to know how long this area is and it is 16 feet. So the reason that's significant that it's 16 feet is because we have an extra cattle panel right now. Uh, we pulled it off of the area where we now have raspberries. We had just an extra uh, tomato wall, <laughs> I guess you could call it, there as a temporary annual thing just because we didn't have anything growing there last year. Well, now we have something growing there. And so I would love, I think, to put that cattle panel back here with the tomatillos because I do need more space now to grow tomatoes. And I might pop some tomatoes in the same area as these tomatillos. Now, I don't actually know if people normally stake and train up tomatillos. Last year was the first year we grew them and we just kind of let them go. And they were massive. They were like six feet by six feet and growing all over the place. But one did start to grow up a trellis that was next to it, kind of like on the other side of the bed from it. And so I'm kind of wondering if we could tame them a little bit more with a trellis. And in my mind that works because tomatoes left to their own devices look a lot like tomatillos left to their own devices. If you ever have successfully grown tomatillos on like a tomato like wall or arch, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know how your experience went. But I'm gonna do some research on that and think about it. But I am glad that this is an area where we could do a cattle panel if we wanted to. Now with that in mind, I think I'm going to, I was already gonna kind of put the tomatillos a little bit off of this back fence here, just so that they get a little bit more sun because this is a pretty shady, like half of it is a pretty shady area about halfway through the day. And so I think I'm gonna move them out a few feet. It would be nice to be able to get on both sides of them anyway. At this point, I think I'm talking because I'm stalling. <laughs> and if I'm talking to you guys, I don't have to do this because uh, I don't, I don't want to do this. But um, yeah, it's time to just get to work. Tackling this part of the garden has been something that I have wanted to do for a very long time. And also I've been avoiding like the plague for a very long time because I knew that it was going to be quite the project. Now, this has just been such an eyesore for me. Uh, you can't actually see this from the house. That's why I put all this stuff here because it was stuff that we originally thought we were going to like process and put into our compost and maybe chip down or something like that. And we just don't have the time to do it. And so it just kind of accumulated through us like pruning our trees and our grapevines and all of that kind of stuff. And then we were pulling grass out of areas and it just became such a mess. And it was always the part where as soon as I turned the corner into the garden and I could see it, I was like, oh man, that's so awful. And <laughs> I wanna get rid of it so bad, I hated it being there. But uh, today was the day to finally tackle this because we needed the space. This took me a while to kind of like finagle what I was doing. These branches were really long and they didn't quite fit in the wheelbarrow. And so I ended up like putting them in and taking them out and all of that kind of stuff. We had these big branches that um, I just ended up just hauling up the hill. And then I moved the wheelbarrow, tried it again. And this just took me a while to figure out how I wanted to do this. Eventually I ended up cutting down some of these bigger branches so that they would fit just because I was trying to figure out the most efficient way to do this and every way just wasn't great. And so yeah, finally I just cut them down just so that they fit into the wheelbarrow a little bit more. And then I was able to get more into the wheelbarrow for other loads. And then I had all this grass that we pulled. So this was the grass that I actually pulled out of the bed where we ended up putting our raspberry canes. We put in three raspberry canes, I wanna say like a month, maybe a month and a half ago. At this point, you can see one is right there. And this is all the grass that came out of that area. It was super long. We had covered it with tarps over the winter time. 
and it definitely helped weaken the grass, but it didn't kill it all, and it definitely didn't, it wasn't on there long enough for the grass to actually decompose. This is really tough Bermuda grass. It's all over the place in our garden. I spent a lot of time pulling grass, especially out of the beds and stuff like that, because we did wood chip this area at the beginning of last year, and the grass just took over again because there was some spots where we, basically by these trees, we ran out of wood chips and the grass just like came over <laughs> and just kept going and took over all of the beds and all of that. This area has definitely been discouraging for me in a lot of different ways. You can see me pausing because I'm looking for spiders and stuff. I hate grabbing things with my bare hands when I can't see the bottom of it. But um, I'm basically like, <laughs> my method for this, I'm going on a little little tangent here, but my method for this is, you can see I try to use a shovel too to avoid using my hands. It didn't work out. But um, I'm always trying to like look and very carefully and see where I'm grabbing things. And then I stop looking so that I don't freak myself out and I can quickly grab things. This is the only way that I'm able to garden. I'm not, I'm very, not into spiders. I don't love creepy crawlies in general, but spiders, I can't do. So you can see there, I thought I saw something. And then I, I moved to a different area because there was a spider there. So anyway, it feels really good to finally tackle this and to have it done now, but this was something that I really didn't wanna do for a very long time. And there was just, there was so much stuff back here that we had planned to you know, have compost in place or move into our compost bins at some point. And all of it was just kind of sitting there and none of it really decomposed. It dried out, but it was all just kind of there. And so I'm really glad that we can kind of reclaim this space a little bit and at least the biggest part of the eyesore is gone. And now it's a productive space, even if it's not still the prettiest space. Okay, we just got a lot done. And I am very hot, very sweaty, and definitely in need of some water and to sit down for a minute. But as you can see behind me, we got all of those really big branches. Most of the smaller branches that we had managed to process before, those are gone too, along with that really ratty tarp that was over here. And all we have left right now is we have a little bit of debris, which I'm honestly not that worried about. I got the big stuff out. And then there's a really big piece of cardboard here. I'm gonna leave that because it is acting as a very great weed suppressant. And I'm gonna need that for the tomatillos anyway. There's also some black tarp over there. I might move some of that around to really just clean up this area, especially if we do end up doing the whole cattle panel. It's gonna need this grassy space over here. So I'm gonna weed whack that. And then I might put some cardboard down over there too and tarp it just to kind of make everything clean so that the grass doesn't come up again. And as you can see here with this whole thing, the grass is coming up where there are holes. So I wanna keep this area as clean as possible if we're gonna use it for planting space. And then eventually we do wanna just completely wood chip this entire area again. So I might get to the rest of this later today after I cool off for a bit. Um, I'm not sure how much time I have, so it might just be a tomorrow morning thing but I am glad that I at least got the worst part of this project done and out of the way. The thing that I really was not looking forward to is officially behind me. So I feel really good about that. And I will see you guys when we start this up again. Now here what I'm doing is I grab my tape measure just because I wanted to one, make sure of the spacing between these. They said to plant them about three feet apart. Uh, but I also wanted to double check and know exactly where the cattle panel would go and would how it would fit. And so I just measured that really fast and then got to planting these. Now, what I did here is I just grabbed a box cutter and cut into this huge piece of cardboard that we had put here to keep the grass down. The grass underneath this cardboard is actually still really thick, uh, even though this cardboard's been there for a really long time. The grass underneath, it's all like yellow and straw-like, but it's definitely still alive. <laughs> so I definitely had to, to remove some of the grass and just kind of like pull at it so that I could reach the decomposed wood chips underneath the grass and plant into that. Now, as I was doing this, because I do all of my gardening projects basically during nap times, I 
am just trying to get these plants in because they've been out of the ground for so long at this point and I don't want them to continue to suffer and die while they're not planted. And so this is definitely just get them in as quickly as possible. And here what I did is I grabbed a bag of potting soil. Uh, it's an organic potting soil. It's just what they have at our local nursery. And this is actually what I use for all of my seed starts. It's not because I think it's better than other brands of organic potting soil or anything like that. It's just the one that we have. And so it's the one that we use. And I figured that they, one could use more soil to grow in and use a boost away from the grass just until they got a foothold into the ground. And so I put the potting soil down and then planted the tomatillos into the potting soil. Now, if I was doing this again, I would definitely have planted them deeper into the ground because some of these mounds actually washed away a little bit and I had to put more soil in. But I feel really good that these plants are at least in the ground now. All right guys, so that's another project done. It's definitely not nearly as pretty as I would like the end product of something like this to be, but they're in the ground now and we can work on the rest of the cleanup and just making this space better as we go. Let's give these a good drink of water here. I am not gonna lie, I hate this. <laughs> I hate the way this looks, but this gets the plants in, it gets them growing and I can keep working on it from here. More than anything, I show this because if you're also in a season of life where projects just take longer than you would like them to or hope them to, and you only have like these small pockets of time to garden, I do really hope that sharing my experience with it just kind of encourages you that one, it's okay, and two, you can still garden and you can still grow things. Even if it doesn't look the way that you really want it to at first, it can still be really awesome and be lovely eventually, give you something to work on. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in my garden today. I would love to know how your garden's doing. Are you growing tomatillos? Have you ever grown them before? Uh, are you thinking about giving them a shot? If so, I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. And I'm excited that we get another season of growing things together. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.